I would like to invite to the first talk Professor Mohamed Boadina, Nanostructure Materials for Wastewater Treatment, Bahrain. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm so honored to be among you in this international conference about nanotechnology and nanomaterials. And for that reason, I'm uh, so grateful to the organizing committee for this invitation. So uh, today, my presentation is about one of the most challenging problem, environmental problem, which is uh, wastewater treatment and how nanotechnology can uh, uh, present some solution for that reason. So the outline of my presentation, uh, sorry, okay, so the outline, I just give a brief introduction, then I will talk about uh, one uh, of the contaminant, which is uh, dyes, then um, how we, uh, then I will move up to the heavy meter removal, then since we are dealing with nanomaterials, so I will present some nanotoxicity studies and come up with some conclusions. So, we know that water pollution comes from different uh, uh, issues like laboratory, factories, and food and estate, and this contaminated water will have direct effect on human beings' health and uh, aquatic uh, life and microorganisms. So, we need to care about these nanomaterials which are now used in different applications. So, uh, for uh, uh, for the dyes, we are going to use uh, nanostructured titanium oxide, and for uh, we can use also silver nanoparticles for bacteria, and we can use uh, magnetic nanoparticles for heavy metal adsorption. So, just this is a small slide, just to show why nanotechnology is uh, uh, very uh, interesting. So we know that the surface area uh, is proportional and very simple. Sorry. So the surface area is inversely proportional to the diameter. So once you have high surface area, you can have uh, active sites on the surface, and you can also have uh, higher uh, or energetic surface. The second one is you have large fraction of reaction atoms on the surface. So the third parameters is uh, the, uh, the energy on the surface is uh, proportional uh, to the uh, diameter and also sorry, proportional to the surface energy in this reaction. And you can see for different planes, you can have different uh, reaction energy. The fourth one is, uh, as you know, this is what we call quantum confinement. And the last one, which is uh, very important, also what we call uh, uh, surface defects or uh, defects or imperfection, as you call. So depending on the, the, the type of uh, methodology uh, you, uh, or approach you use for, to prepare your uh, nano samples or nano materials. So we have uh, either uh, top down, you have uh, structural defects, but if you go to bottom up, you can have what we call size and shape dependent uh, properties. So now the part, uh, first part is I will talk about photodegradation of dyes using uh, titanium O2. So we know that uh, titanium O2 has different uh, three types of crystal structure. You have anatase, rotyl, and brocite, but the most active is anatase. And sometimes it's not easy to make a single phase. So if you have additional phases in terms of rotyl or brocite, so you have less active uh, phase. So, so in, the, in the first part, I, we used a very simple technique, which is a soldier deep coating, and we try to use a different uh, agent like uh, 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 chloride acid or uh, nitric acid. So, at the big, so we prepared the sample and we can see this is a single phase. Uh, 
okay, with high preferred orientation along 101. And as mentioned before, uh, the, 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 the preferred orientation has also direct effect on the reactivity of uh, your surface. So, and you can see that there is no size effect in terms of crystalline size, but you can see that the micro stain is uh, much higher for nitric acid. Okay, so we will see that what, how this will affect. So we did some FASCM uh, 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 analysis and we can see that uh, for HCL you have a continuous film with some uh, microsite uh, pores or cracks, but for the case of nitric acid you have very continuous film uh, formed of uh, nanoparticles. So, uh, and we did of course UV transmittance uh, and UV uh, transmittance uh, measurements and we can see that most, you can see some interferences, which gives an indication about the quality of your surface. And also from this you can, from the, how to say, the amplitude, you can determine uh, the, what we call the thickness of the surface. So, uh, the, 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 trans uh, the, the transmission is about 80%, but the energy gap, there is slight difference between HCL and HNO3. So, just a minute. I think it's very slow, I try. So, we did the photo degradation of dyes, so we can see the evolution of the main peak of, uh, I think we use methyl, methyl blue, so we can see at the beginning, then it will degrade up to uh, 90%. So, now, what is the effect of using a tight, uh, uh, hydro, uh, 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 HCL or HNO3? So you can see that with the HNO3, you can reach about 80% of photo degradation, while which is almost double of uh, chloridic acid. What's the main reason for that? So we did uh, atomic force microscopy. So we try and we find that there is a, a higher roughness for uh, nitric acid. Uh, so, uh, yes, nitric acid, 36 nanometer, compared to 17 only for chloridic acid. We went more deep in the analysis and we calculate using the, what we call the surface potential. It's very powerful technique in atomic force microscopy. So, and we use the, the work function, and we try to determine the, the, the potential between the tip of uh, the AFM and your surface. And surprisingly, we found that there is a, a difference between uh, the, the potential between uh, titanium O2, of course, prepared by HCN, and, and it's very clear this is the main reason for the, the bitter catalytic effect of uh, titanium O2 prepared using uh, nitric acid compared to... So, we conclude up that the two main factors that affect our photocatalytic activity of titanium oxide is the roughness and also the surface potential, which is estimated around 40 millivolts. So, this is the first part. Then, after that, we moved to some uh, doping effect. So we try to dop titanium also. So this is a surface effect. Then after that, we move it to, to the effect of doping. Uh, yes, so we did some doping with uh, uh, silver, aluminum, and copper. And we did, uh, again, using the same technique, the same process, and we varied the uh, concentration of doping elements. So again, we obtained single phase, so we are very good to prepare single phase Anatase uh, using this uh, sample technique. And again, we find preferred orientation. Now we would like to see the effect of doping nature, the nature of the doping element and its concentration on the photocatalytic activity. Sorry, because it's slow to move up. I don't know. So, uh, this is a, a analysis of X-ray diffraction. So, we, we can see again, uh, we have better control of particle size or crystalline size. So, for different composition and different uh, topping elements, we are in the same range, uh, micro strain uh, can change it, and we have slight change in lattice parameter. So some people, they said, when you make doping, why? You have, if you have a, dop a real doping or successful doping, you have an effect on lattice parameter. But some cases, I will show you that uh, some elements, they don't go inside the crystal structure, but they form nano cluster on the surface, but also this is beneficial for the activity because they play a role as a catalytic, like silver and etc. So we did again uh, high resolution uh, uh, field emission sc scanning uh, microscopy, and we obtain, uh, for example, for instance, for uh, AG, as I said, we obtain nanodots well dispersed on the surface of titanium O2 film, 
and they form aggregates about 200 nanometers. And for aluminium, we have a very good distribution. Uh, for, uh, for copper, we have uh, nanoparticles below 10 nanometer, but there is some effect of solubility uh, when we go to higher concentration. So we, we did again atomic force, force microscopy and for, diff, for all the samples and we come up with these results. So most of the film they exhibit granular structure uh, with sizes less than 100 nanometer and the, the surface roughness, uh, for example for copper content, it's between 0 0.6 or below 0 0.4 and go up to 10, 2 nanometers for higher concentration. Then after very high concentration, uh, we can, as, as I said, you can see we have some nano aggregates of 3-5 nanometers. Now, so we did again optical uh, spectroscopy uh, using UV spectroscopy and you can see again we obtain very good uh, surface because we have these interferences. So we can see that AG dot uh, titanium O2 we have, how to say, a transmittance around 70% uh, for aluminum 80%, however it goes to lower values for copper copper uh, doping. So in terms of uh, energy band gap, you can see that it increases in the case of silver and copper. However, for aluminum, there is very small changes. So I, I would say it's insignificant. Now, we come back to the photodegradation of dyes. And for this case, we use again rhodamine B. Uh, so we can see that there is a, a reduction. So so we can say that the photodegradation or removal of uh, dyes, sometimes we use methyl blue and sometimes we use rhodamine. So we can see that for Ag, we, the optimum concentration is 0.5% and we obtain 80% of degradation. For the case of aluminium, it's much lower, which is 0.2%. And for copper, unfortunately, there is a very, very, it's not very good, but we obtain very low uh, doping, uh, sorry, very low degradation compared to pure titanium O2. Okay, sis, so this is our published paper and you can uh, get copies of them. Now, I move to the second part, which is a heavy metal removal, and we use magnetic nanoparticles. So, as I mentioned during the presentation, that nanoparticles, they have a high surface area, so, and the surface is very active, so you can absorb uh, different uh, heavy metal ions in the aqueous solution. And by a simple magnet, you see, so you can have the, uh, uh, the, the heavy metal ions on the surface, and by a simple magnet, you can make a separation. And also, some people, they ask me, and this process can be reused, so these nanoparticles can be uh, uh, retreated and be used again. So, so we use it, uh, uh, we try to use uh, I2 iron to oxygen 3, so in that case, we try to use gotit, which is uh, iron hydroxide, and by sample mechanical milling, as I presented during the summer course, this is very useful technique and low cost. So we have, uh, we start with nanocrystalline uh, gotit, and by mechanical milling, we obtain phase transformation to iron, to hematite, and with nanocrystalline particle size in a 15 nanometer scale. So, so this is the magnetic properties. So we know gotit is, uh, we, we want to confirm this phase transformation. Gotit is paramagnetic, however, uh, magnetite is uh, uh, ferromagnetic because we want a ferromagnetic uh, material for phase separation later on. So, so we can see from this slide that we have a very selective uh, uh, absorption of heavy metal. Uh, so, at the beginning, we optimize, of course, sorry, I can come back. So, we fix at the pH, we, we need to fix uh, certain conditions, and we, vary the, uh, we want to see the selectivity. So, we fix at the pH and temperature and the concentration of the solution and the, the concentration of magnetic nanoparticles. And we can see the selectivity in terms of element, cadmium, cobalt, nickel, and chromium. So, then we, we try to optimize the pH, and we confirm that because we, we, we use it seven according to the literature, you know. So, but we wanted to test this for our samples, and we find the pH seven is very uh, convenient for heavy metal removal. How much? Five minutes more, up to five minutes. Five minutes, okay, yeah. I need to be quickly because I have other parts, so. Uh, 
So we did also nickel doping, uh, and I need to move quickly. So we did magnetic uh, characterization. But if you have any question, please, during the conference, you can ask me. So we control uh, the magnetic properties using uh, nickel doping. Then I show the results of uh, heavy metal adsorption. Again, we have selectivity almost in the same order, but the, you can see it depends on the concentration of nickel. So you can see, I think, the optimum concentration depends on the elements, you see. So if you take 50 up to 0.15 for uh, chromium is the same. However, for cadmium, it, it, it's, uh, it's very sensitive to the concentration of nickel. So it depends on the elements you want to remove, and therefore you can optimize or choose the right doping concentration. So again, we use the magnesium uh, spinel phase. Uh, I move on. So we make all the calculations, uh, and we try to understand the physics behind that. So we did SEM, again, magnetic properties, and uh, we can see that how, because we need to understand the mechanism of uh, magnetic properties, we can, we can, uh, why we increase uh, saturation magnetization, decrease of HC, etc., and we try to give uh, different mechanisms. So for this case, you can see the decrease for a sample treated at 700, the decrease of uh, coercivity and remanence is due to the formation of spinal phase. Then after at 800, there is an increase, which is due to the grain growth, so it's another mechanism. And the last one is due to the better crystallinity and better homogeneity in terms of uh, uh, phase composition. So now I come back to the adsorption. So we can see that there is again a selectivity, but the order has changed for magnesium uh, spinel. So if in the future we try to combine or to make nanocomposites, so we can combine different uh, nanomaterials to obtain uh, a very good uh, sample for uh, much uh, element. So we can see this compound is more, more selective for nickel compared to cadmium and uh, nickel. Chromium and uh, cadmium. So this is the results. I want to move. This is our references. You can use this reference. Now I, I will talk about the last one. So uh, we want, since we, we are dealing with uh, nanomaterials, so we try to see the nanotoxicity. What is the effect of these uh, 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 nanomaterials on uh, aquatic species? So we, I have a friend, he's a uh, biologist, and he uh, deals with microalgae. So we use uh, microalgae as microorganism to test our samples. So I don't, you know all of this about transport, deposition, etc. So I just uh, skip up some slides. So uh, we did, uh, we, uh, first, uh, we, uh, I didn't show because it's very short presentation. So we tested some conventional and uh, nanomaterials that are already in the market and use it in cosmetics and mean applications, like for instance titanium oxide, zinc oxide, and hematite, iron uh, magnetite, sorry, iron to oxygen four, which are used already in cosmetic in cosmetics and also uh, other examples. So, and what we want to do? We want to test this the effect of uh, these nanoparticles during the growth of algae. So we want to see if it favor or kill the algae during the growth. So we, uh, we did also, for this presentation, I just want to show graphene, uh, graphene oxide. Because people, they say graphene is not toxic, but we will show that graphene oxide is toxic. So we did uh, some characterization of graphene we prepared. So using ramen, uh, all these techniques, but I will just skip up. Uh, we did FTIR, ramen spectroscopy, and UV visible also just to be sure that we have the right sample. And also to explain afterwards our results. I just move on again. So we did XPS, so all the techniques useful for. So now, we, what we obtain that the toxicity of graphene oxide increases with increasing the concentration. So this is one. So the lowest concentration of 0.5 milligrams was found to improve the algae growth. So you see, the concentration has a double effect. So at lower concentration, it favored the growth of algae, but for higher concentration, it has an opposite effect. Uh, so, this is our results. And uh, I have one or two minutes, okay, so, so this is our results. 
again, I just want to show the last slide, which is the EM analysis. Uh, just slightly. Another one. Oh, very slow. So, you see that this is an interesting TM resolution. So, you can see that graphene oxide can make a coating around the cell layers. And after that, because if it's accumulation of graphene oxide, then it can interact with the cell, with the, how to say, with the, the cell, and can come inside. If you, ask, if you have an excess of graphene oxide, it will penetrate inside the cell. And that's why we, show, we, we confirm this interaction. So this is our papers published in international journals. So I would like to thank my collaborators from different countries. And I have uh, uh, this slide, this is announcement for my uh, new books with the Grutter in Germany. So I have two series of books, uh, one related to nanotechnology advanced and uh, perspectives. I have seven volumes. And the second series is about energy technology. And again, I have seven volumes. So if you are interested to submit a chapter in my books, so you, you are welcome. And you can send me email or contact me later on. Thank you very much for uh, your, uh, your for your uh, for being here and for uh, for your informative information. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Bodina. We have uh, time for one very short question. If somebody wants to do it, there are two microphones on the right side and on the left side. So please uh, go to them and ask. If if not then we probably, I guess, we could go further. Oh, you have one? Yes, please. There is a question here. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Near, yes. near the camera, there is microphone. Is it yeah. okay. uh, thank you very much for uh, your last presentation. Thank you. Uh, and uh, the, the, my question is about uh, the absorption of heavy metals. Yes. Uh, you suggest that uh, the optimal absorption is uh, at neutral. Yes. This solution. Yes. Uh, can you explain us uh, shortly the, the physics and mechanics of neutral? Why neutral is optimal? Oh, this is mainly in chemistry. I think I didn't look uh, myself at this uh, because uh, I'm physicist, by the way. <laughs> so I think maybe because uh, let me think. Uh, for our case, yes, it was uh, pH 7, but maybe for other cases, it's much lower. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I know for other... It's only for your case. Yes, for your, my case, yes. Uh, we found. That's why we changed the, the optimum. But honestly, I didn't, we didn't look, I didn't myself look in details about what mechanism control uh, the pH. Uh, I think it's mainly chemical reactions, to be honest. But I don't know exactly. Thank Sorry you. about this. <laughs> maybe you can help me for this. <laughs> Okay, if there are no more questions, then we thank to the speaker. Thank you.